Hello. In this video, let's see an actual sensor in action with Raspberry Pi. For this particular video, we have chosen this sensor which is called as DHT11 to interface with Raspberry Pi. There are several reasons for choosing DHT11. The very first reason is it's very simple digital sensor and therefore it can directly get interfaced with Raspberry Pi. The second reason for choosing this one is it gives us two values. Those are humidity as well as temperature. So it can sense the atmospheric humidity as well as temperature and it can give us those two values. The third important reason for choosing DHT11 is its price. Almost anyone would be able to afford it because DHT11 comes very cheaper. Now let's see how we can interface DHT11 with Raspberry Pi and how we can write down a Python program for the same. A little bit about DHT11, as said, it's a digital temperature and humidity sensor. This contains a negative temperature coefficient thermistor for measuring the temperature value and it consists of a resistive type humidity sensor. So both the temperature and humidity are sensed by changes in the resistance itself by the elements which are present inside the sensor. But the sensor also consists of all the required circuitry which is required to process these values coming from the sensor. And therefore what we get is a complete digital data onto a single wire. It requires only single wire or one wire for data signal and therefore it is easier, it is very easier to interface DHT11 with a variety of different controllers. Any controller or any microcontroller like Arduino or any computer like Raspberry Pi can be easily interfaced with DHT11. <coughs> DHT11 operates on 3 to 5 volt power as well as input output pin. So it is okay if you operate it at 3.3 volt while using with Raspberry Pi and 5 volt while using it Arduino. The maximum current it requires is quite low. It is 2.5 milliampere for that to only during the conversion. And the humidity readings are good between 20 to 80 percent with 5 percent accuracy. The temperature readings are good up to 50 degrees Celsius and the tolerance is plus minus 2 degrees Celsius. The sampling rate, it means the data rate with which it can pass on the data should not be more than 1 hertz, means it cannot give data more than once every second. The body size is specified a bit and it also specifies it has got 4 pins. Although we need only one pin for interfacing and two pin for power connection, one redundant or NC pin is there, which is not to be connected anywhere. Let's see the pinout. So this is the pinout of DHT11. Now in this particular pinout, as you can see, the pin number one or the first pin from left hand side is VCC which should go to 5 volt or 3.3 volt. In our case, it will go to 3.3 volt because we are interfacing it with Raspberry Pi. So this is the pin number one which will go to 3.3 volt. The second pin is data pin. Third pin is NC and the fourth pin is ground or zero volt pin. This is how we have to give connection. So this one will go to 3.3 volt. This is data pin which should go to any GPIO pin of our Raspberry Pi and the last pin is ground. Moreover, <clears throat> there is one thing required and that is this pull up register. This is something very important and you simply cannot miss this. You have to connect an external 10 kilo ohm pull up register between VCC and data pin. So it will be something like this. You can connect it on a breadboard while interfacing. So that's how the interfacing of DHT11 is to be done with Raspberry Pi. Let's see the library installation for DHT11, how to install the library required and how to write down a sample program. Now before installing any libraries from GitHub, GitHub uh, I will discuss in detail in a later video. It's an online repository where the software codes can be saved and easily downloaded. And we do make use of the Adafruit made libraries. Adafruit is uh, a very popular company making DIY kits uh, which is situated in New York, USA. And they also create a lot of different libraries for Raspberry Pi to make things easier to handle the sensors like DHT11. Now, in order to install the library, what we have to do is we have to run some commands on Raspberry Pi. 
So let me show you what are the commands that we need to run and how to install the library. The very first command is this entire thing git clone https github.com slash adafruit slash adafruit underscore python underscore dht dot git. The underscores are not seen here because it is treated as a link. Let me show you. If I remove the hyperlink, <coughs> you can see the underscores are there. This is the first command. What will happen with this command is you download the software onto the Raspberry Pi. So this will simply download the code. The job of this is download code. Second, what we do is it downloads the code in a folder. Okay, so it downloads the code folder. That's the first command to execute. The second command to execute is this. It means we go inside the downloaded folder with this particular command. The third command is installation of some essentials which are required to install Python libraries. So sudo apt-get install build essential. Python dev is already there. Python open SSL is required. So you can run this command depending upon if the packages are available or installed or not. It will require those ones which are not installed. And then the last command which you can see is installation of Python library. Now this particular command here is sudo python and therefore what I have done is I have given you additional instruction where you can also directly install it for python 3 with sudo pip3 install adafruit python dht. So either this or this approach is suitable. So all these above steps or this single step below. Okay. The fifth step or all the above steps. And when you are doing it for Python 3, instead of making it sudo python, make it python3 setup.py installed. Let me show you. Now let's do it on Raspberry Pi itself. So what I'll do is I'll follow these commands first. Download the code. Then go inside it and build it on my Raspberry Pi. So let's copy this command. Let's open my Raspberry Pi. Let's close whatever it was open over there. Full screen, clear ones. Now I'll paste it and it will download the adafruit underscore python underscore dht. Now I can open the home folder and you can see the folder being created. adafruit underscore python underscore dht. Now let's go inside that folder. cd adafruit underscore python underscore dht. At this point, we have to install some important or required dependencies by this command sudo apt get install build essential all in all so let's copy this and enter so those packages as required are installed unable to locate python dash dev python open ssl so let's remove the python dash dev let's keep only python open ssl so they are already installed no need to do anything over there now let's run the last command, which is sudo python setup.py install. sudo python 3 I will use setup.py space install. Because we are installing the libraries for python 3 and raspberry pi by default contains both python 2 as well as python 3. And whenever you refer to something as just python, it is often times referred to python 2. And hence, if you have to specify Python 3, better you simply write down sudo Python 3 like this. Now it will run the libraries. It will install the libraries onto Raspberry Pi, which we have just downloaded. Now the library installation is done. Next, what you have to do is go to adafruit underscore python dht folder. You will see the examples folder over there. And here you will see this simple test.py. So simply copy this simple test.py. Keep it somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll create a folder over here. Course codes. I'll just paste it here. Simple test.py. 
I will rename it so that it reads dht underscore simple test dot pi. Now it's time to perform the connections with Raspberry Pi and see the output of this program. Let's see the connections and let's then try to see the output of this code in the next video. Thank you for watching this one. Now as you can see, I have a DHT11 module over here. So there isn't much change in what I showed you and this module. The only change is the required pull-up register is present onto this PCB along with a power on indication LED. And therefore it has got only three pins as you can read VCC, data and ground. So if you have a module like this, you can directly interface VCC pin here, data pin here and ground pin right over here. Otherwise, you can install the DHT11 sensor in the breadboard and then perform the connections as you want. For me, since I have this module, I don't want to use the breadboard now. I can simply use female to female connector and directly connect it to Raspberry Pi. Now I just keep this setup aside. This is the LDR setup we did. Now you can see this is the female to female bias. Okay. Both ends are female connectors, as you can see. Now I'll connect it like this. All three pins. You can see the white is VCC and the brown is ground, the black is data. So the white is VCC. And brown is ground. So this is the PCC connection that I'm making. The third pin from left, uh, first pin from left side is VCC. The third pin from right side is ground. After this connection, I can see the LED powered on over here. And this is the beta pin, which I connect to the identifier pin, pin number 21. Now the connections are done for this particular sensor. Now let's see the output. Let's keep it as it is. Now let's open this dht underscore simple test dot pi in Thony IDE. It's a simple testing code guys. So I'll first demonstrate this and then we'll try to do something out of this test code. It has got a lot of comments into this code. First there is a declaration of sensor. So we are not using DHT22, we are using DHT11. So just make it DHT11. And let me clarify the code a bit so that you understand it well. And don't think that it's quite big or quite heavy. So first declaration of the sensor. If you can, if you want, you can use DHT22 also, which is a bit accurate than DHT11, but expensive. If it is DHT22, just make it 22. Otherwise, make it 1 1. Connections and everything remains almost same. Then here we mention the pin. Right now we have connected it to 21 number of Raspberry Pi. So let's make it 21. And now these are the lines. So temperature, humidity, comma temperature is equal to Adafruit underscore DHT dot read retry. Why read retry is because in single reading you may not get the DHT11 response and therefore you want to retry it. This particular line over here will wait for 2 seconds and it will retry it for 2 seconds. If there is no data then an error will be displayed. After the data is received on the next line what we do is we are checking if humidity is not none and temperature is not none. It means we have got some fair valid values for temperature and humidity and in that case what we do is I will remove this complications and make it simple and then what we'll do is we'll print temp is equal to the first parameter and the humidity is equal to second parameter so temp is equal to bracket 0 humidity is equal to curly bracket 1 dot format temperature comma humidity else fail to get the reading try again it means if either of these two value is none or zero, it means fail to get the reading and try again. Now let's run this code. The connections are done. And we are supposed to get a reading over here or the temperature or humidity value over here. 
as you can see we got the temperature and humidity value so temperature is equal to 28 degrees celsius and humidity is equal to 47 percent but the program exited by giving a single reading now what i want is i would like to convert this program into a code which can give continuous values let's switch to the regular mode of thony by closing it and restarting it again this is the full mode in which you can save the programs as needed so i'll go to file and i will call it save as <clears throat> And then DHT, instead of simple test, let's call it continuous test. Let's shorten the code. Now you have got a fair idea of how it's working. Now what I want is the code should run in infinite loop. So I will also import time library. And from this point on onwards, my program should be running in while true loop so that it gives us continuous readings. After you write down while true and the curly brace, uh, the colon is opened, you need to indent your program like this. <clears throat> After if also, the indentation is required like this. Similarly for else. Now this is done once. After single iteration, what should we do is, we'll take a delay of, let's say, one second. And now, let's run this code. Now, let's see the output over here. So, we are getting the readings. Temperature is equal to 27 degrees Celsius. Humidity is equal to 48 point something, 49.0. I also happen to have a soldering gun over here. So, this is the soldering iron that I have. And I can keep it close to this uh, DHT11 so that it can sense some of the temperature that it's giving. So the soldering gun is turned on. It has started heating up. But uh, will take some time. Now <clears throat> let's try to see. So the gun is quite hot now. Now let's keep it close and blow some air through it. So it is sensing the atmospheric temperature. And therefore, not much change would be observed. Still, you can see the temperature has risen by 1 degree Celsius in proximity to the gun. I have one more experiment which we can do here. Instead of the soldering gun, now I use the hot air gun. How much temperature it can sense that. Now, this is the hot air gun that I have. Let me show you. So, these are the settings for it. So, I will just make it on now. This is the air and this is temperature setting. So let's keep the temperature on the mid setting. Air normal. Should not be very too much high flow. Otherwise the sensor would get damaged. Make sure if you are doing this kind of experiments, then keep a distance between the nozzle and your hand. As well as the nozzle and the sensor also. So this is the nozzle. And this is the sensor. I will keep it quite far away from each other. But hot air is blown. Code has stopped. Let's stop it and let's run it again. So you can see 31 degrees Celsius. If I now blow the air close to it, then it's ready the temperature value 34. 35, 36, if I bring it closer, then it is 40 degrees Celsius and the humidity is reduced because I am blowing hot air into it. 47, 49, don't do it more than that, otherwise you may damage the sensor. Now let's <coughs> keep the gun decked, let's close the airflow, let me remove the setup. And now observe the readings. Slowly, they will come back to the normal position. 47, 46 and so on. Should take some time. But after some time, it will come to normal point. So this is the code that you need to run 
or to read the temperature from DHT11 sensor. We have seen the DHT11 sensor in action as well as we have seen it extensively tested with a hot air gun also. Make sure whenever you perform this kind of experiments, you maintain proper safety. Thank you for watching this video.